making another video just because it, this is a topic I find interesting. Uh, so I'm sure some of you know about all the shit going on with, you know, fucking all the YouTubers now being called out for uh, engaging with uh, Shad Base. That's their name, I think. That person who made fucked up drawings. Uh, yeah. And so one thing that, like, I was watching... So I watch uh, some Ordinary Gamers on YouTube. Uh, and so I was watching his most recent video about the Mr. Beast stuff. And he brought up sh the Shad Base stuff and was all like... Uh some people defend it by saying it falls under freedom of speech but then he brought up this one case which is i looked up the case because i got interested at this point uh whenever i i really find the law extremely interesting um just like taking it, it's kind of like philosophy in a way and i love philosophy so for me law is like philosophy but it has real world implications all the time you know because you can do these thought experiments of what if this happens but you have actual precedences to base your conclusions off of and sometimes those conclusions are wrong sometimes it won't be that way sometimes the law might change over time because it does happen and so in that way, it is like philosophy where there is no true, correct answer most of the time, you know, for any uh, thought experiment when it comes to the law. But it can still be interesting to have these little debates of like, should this be illegal? Should this be legal? Um, stuff like that. And so in this case, uh, Mudahar says that Shad Base's drawings would fall under um the obscenity law or not the obscenity law but the the they would fall under a um i guess sort of loophole of the freedom of speech clause it's a clause for freedom of speech that's pretty much if a piece is obscene enough then it does not fall under free speech and can, in fact, get you arrested. And so I looked into it because I saw in the Wikipedia thing that he put up or whatever about the obscenity law, it brought up this thing called the Miller test, the Miller obscenity test. So I decided to look that up and we have it right here. So I had to look up one word from it because I wasn't sure what it meant. I had a, f I, I, I had a feeling I knew what it meant, but I wasn't 100% sure, so I decided to look it up. But in the Miller obscenity test, it is what's called a three-prong test, as we can see right here. Um, any work that meets all three and only all three conditions uh, Will the work then be considered obscene? Let's see, what does this say? The first two prongs of the Miller test are held to the standard of the community. And the third prong is based on whether a reasonable person would find such value in material taken as a whole. So there is a lot of leeway here uh, in the fact that the wording is very much um, vague and the meaning is very vague. So. This is great. I love it when things are vague in the law because it really allows you to kind of like work with it, you know? Uh, I don't want to be a lawyer because that just sounds like an awful time, but I have a feeling being a lawyer has to be fun, at least, at least when it comes down to trying to figure out how to write your defense of something. That's what is really interesting to me is the defense aspect. And so uh, I wanted to know what these three prongs 
would be in practice. And so the Miller test was created because of a Supreme Court thing of Miller v. California. Also, by the way, the three prongs are whether the average person applying contemporary community standards would find that the work taken as a whole appears to the prurient interest, which prurient... Prurient. Yes, prurient. Okay. Uh, is characterized by an inordinate interest in sex and inordinate is just like excessive. So characterized by an excessive interest in sex. And so if so so if if a piece is really, really horny <laughs> pretty much, then boom, strike one. Strike number two, whether the work depicts or describes in a patently offensive way sexual conduct or excretory functions, specifically defined by applicable state law. And so by excretory functions, I would assume it would mean sort of like peeing and shitting. We can check that to see if I am correct. Yes. So yeah. Peeing and shitting. <laughs> Pretty much. And then the final one is whether the work taken as a whole lacks serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. So these are the three prongs for if something is considered obscene enough for it to not fall under freedom of speech. However, one thing that Mudahar doesn't bring up is the fact that in the Miller v. California case, this is what makes it interesting. The The case is pretty much Marvin Miller owned a California mail order business and it would send brochures um, advertising uh, graphic depictions of sex. And so these brochures would be sent to homes, meaning that they were in view of the public and it wasn't something you could necessarily avoid and there wasn't any safety net to stop individuals who shouldn't be viewing this material from viewing it and that's where i think shad bases art would fall under freedom of speech because i think they should add a fourth prong here which the reason they didn't add the fourth prong of, you know, does it have the not safe for work tag is because it doesn't need the fourth prong. Freedom of speech is 100% protected when it's in private conversation, as long as the private conversation does not involve illegal activity. And artwork cannot necessarily be described as a legal activity. For instance, if I were to, for instance, all of those videos of people holding up like decapitated Trump heads back in 2016 or whatever, that would fall under freedom of speech. However, you could realistically say that, well, it's obscene. With the average person, you know, would they find it prurient interest? So because it's not sexual, it actually, you know, decapitated Trump head would actually pass this. So let's go over some things that maybe wouldn't pass. Actually, let's go with things that do pass. Concerts. Um... There was a band that my parents really liked called Itis, and they would have sex toys and sex dolls and shit on stage with them. And it it was stupid. They would, like, throw the... Fu it, you know how, like, at concerts they have volleyballs? Or not volleyballs, but um uh, the beach balls? You know, the inflatable beach balls? They'll just throw those into the fucking crowd? They would throw fucking sex dolls into the crowd. Because that was just... It was funny. But... These were at, you know, 21 years or older bars. So because of that, 
it is not in a public place. It is not in a place where children could easily accidentally stumble upon it. And I think when it comes to the internet, that's what not safe for work tags are. Or if you host your own site for certain things, because theoretically, I'm just going to point this out right now. If we say that Shad Base's art falls under, it, it meets all three prongs, because let's be real here, it does. So if it meets all three prongs and we ignore the privacy aspect, of the artwork's distribution. If we say the artwork being distributed alone should make it so that it would need the Miller test, then websites such as Pornhub would not exist. Um, OnlyFans should not exist. Um, pretty much every website that has porn on it should not exist. Because it appeals to an excess, it, 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 it's prurient content, it is sexual conduct, sometimes excretory functions as well, and there is no artistic, literary, political, or scientific value to porn. So therefore, porn should not fall under uh, freedom of speech if we say that Shad Bass's art shouldn't fall under freedom of speech. So, realistically, we have to include the fact that in order to obtain the artwork, you have to... If, if you have to go out of your way to obtain the artwork then it falls under freedom of speech. If you don't go out of your way to obtain the artwork, for instance, if Shad Bass himself was distributing the artwork via mail to people or email or something like that where it is a non-avoidable thing, you know, then... In that case, it wouldn't fall under freedom of speech then, and it would be subject to the Miller test, in which case, in my opinion, it should and and would fail the Miller test. But we have to remember that this privacy aspect is what protects so much freedom of speech. Because without the privacy aspect, without the how difficult is it to obtain this information, either art or animation or speech, then everything would be subject to the Miller test. And shit, even some of Muda's own videos could theoretically be considered offensive and prurient and lacking any serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. It could be argued. I would personally say that Muda's videos always meet the third requirement. So, I mean, they always don't meet the third re requirement. I, I would say his videos always have some value to them, either be literary or political. Uh, I don't think they necessarily have artistic value, but they do have some sort of value to them. And so they wouldn't meet that third one. But, you know, if somebody wanted to be a dick, they could probably argue that, no, it doesn't have any value, and therefore his videos would be subject to the Miller test. So, so yeah, we have to truly recognize that this is a thing. That privacy is an aspect of freedom of speech. The more private, the, the harder it is to... Um, come by a certain piece of media the more it should fall under freedom of speech in my opinion at least because if we don't have that kind of aspect to freedom of speech then we're going to lose the right of freedom of speech now 
while yes this is technically a defense of shad base uh i don't agree with his drawings like just no but even though i disagree with his drawings i think that he should you know his stuff should fall under freedom of speech because if it doesn't then that opens up the floodgates to have a lot of bad things happen that uh would be better off not happening so yeah uh that was just an interesting thought i had and kind of, kind of a little little thought rabbit hole i wanted to go down with you all um Maybe maybe a real lawyer could cover this. Maybe legal legal, for instance, could uh cover this thing because I had never heard of the Miller test until now. And it's really interesting. Honestly, learning about it now is like, wow, that's really cool. So yeah. Um I would love to see bigger um law based channels cover the miller test because it is a truly interesting thing and it really does um beg a lot of questions about what falls under freedom of speech then and why don't certain things why why do certain things fall under freedom of speech even though they would not pass the miller test anyways uh with that being said, see you guys in the next one. Peace.